Hi everyone. Welcome to PyTorch 2021 Hackathon. My name is Jyoti Nukula and I'm a product manager on PyTorch team for Responsible AI. I'm going to talk about Responsible AI category for the hackathon and give you some tips and ideas for building your own projects. And I can't wait to see what you'll build this year. So here's what I'll cover today. We'll look at what do we mean by Responsible AI and why does Responsible AI matter? and building responsible AI projects at the hackathon, some ideas and, and some questions that you can ponder about. We'll discuss last year's winners and we'll talk about the ideas for responsible AI projects. So what is responsible AI? Responsible AI is a broad area that covers a number of different topics. We think about RAI across the following categories, fairness and inclusion, privacy and security, transparency and control, robustness and safety, and governance and accountability. Responsible AI is all about providing equitable outcomes for subgroups. It's about giving users the ability to control their experiences, helping them understand why a model behaves the way it does, and keeping information safe and implementing appropriate checkpoints to meet regulatory standards. These are some characteristics of responsible AI, but why does it matter? In the last decade, AI is increasingly used to make decisions that affect people's lives. In recent years, we have seen several examples where decisions that have been traditionally made by humans are now being made by algorithms from helping determine who is hired or fired or who is granted a loan or how long an individual spends in prison. These decisions are, as you know, non-trivial and have a consequential impact on the world and the lives of the people. Since AI has started to play a critical role, legislation is dictating that AI no longer be a black box. New legislation such as GDPR and California Consumer Privacy Act mandates products and experiences to incorporate privacy preservation and explainability to be legally compliant. And these are no longer uh, considered as nice to have in a product or experience. And if you think about it, it's changing how the world consumes and builds AI. And this makes a critical direction for us to think about in PyTorch as well. So here are some examples of responsible AI in the community. There are many other examples in the community out there, but here are a few that I'm going to talk about today. Cohere API provides access to models that read billions of web pages and learn to understand the meaning, sentiment, and intent of the words used. It anticipates and accounts for risks during the development process by running adversarial attacks, filtering data for harmful text, and measuring models against safety research benchmarks. Another company, Fiddler, enables users to access deep model level actionable insights to understand, explain, monitor, and analyze the AI models in production. Our AI tools like Counterfeit, Interpret ML, and FairLearn in Microsoft Azure help developers implement these tools in their workflow as they go about their processes. Finally, Responsible AI Toolkit in TensorFlow works across every step of the workflow, right from problem definition, data preparation, training, evaluation, and deployment. So what are some questions that you could think about for these tools to answer? One question could be, is my model biasing on a specific group of people based on their race, income, sexuality, nationality, or limited body abilities? Other question could be, do I know if my data sets for training and validation are inclusive? Or is my model development process secure so it doesn't put personal information at risk? Do I understand the social impact of my model inferences? And lastly, is there a way to visualize my model to stop any bias inferences? And these are just a few questions. There may be many other questions that you could ponder about. Let's look at last year's winners. 
COSING won the third place last year as a multivariate graphical analysis tool to help interpret the causal effects of a given equation system. Fluence, a PyTorch-based deep learning library for low resource NLP research and robustness won the second place. And finally, FairTorch provides tools to mitigate inequalities in deep learning and won the first place last year. A unique feature of this tool is that you can add a fairness constraint to your model by simply adding a few lines of code. As you can see, the projects last year ranged across diverse topics and a wide range of problem areas. Now we'll speak to Narine Hoklikian, an expert within the Responsible AI community to give you more ideas for projects to build. Narine, thanks for joining us today. It's great to have you. Can you introduce yourself to the participants? Hi, Jyoti. Thank you very much for inviting me to this hackathon session. I'm happy to help. Um, I'm a research scientist at Facebook. I have been working on various different uh, responsible AI project last, projects last two, three years. More specifically, I've been working on model interpretability, robustness, and model debugging. Great. So let's dive in then. Um, I have some questions I'll ask you that we likely to get from hackathon participants. And if you are a hackathon participant and you have any other questions that I didn't cover today, please feel free to ask them in the comments or reach out to your hackathon organizer. I'll also add a few links to more resources in the comments as well. So I'll ask you a few questions to give our participants insights and ideas on projects that they can build for the Responsible AI track. First, let me start with a broad one. Um, responsible AI means many things, and it also means many things to many different people. So what does responsible AI mean to you? That's a great question, Jyoti. As you mentioned, responsible AI is a broad notion, uh, which consists of several um, areas, sub areas addressing ethical, legal, security, privacy, and transparency aspects of AI. I'll go into details um, into detail for some of those uh, sub areas uh, to make sure that we understand them. Um, so the first area is a transparency and explainability. This area ensures that our models are self-explanatory or their decisions can be explained post hoc by explainability algorithms. The second one is fairness. Fairness ensures that our models are inclusive and make fair decisions regardless of our uh, race, ethnicity, gender, and other sensitive attributes. Privacy preserving ML ensures privacy of user data uh, during training and inference um, more specifically, it includes, for example, differential privacy, federated learning, or learning on encrypted data. And the last sub, uh, section that I'd like to mention is robustness and safety. Robustness and safety ensures that our models are safe to be used in our products and aren't prone to any adversarial attacks and perturbations. Thanks, uh, Narine. That it's very helpful for breaking that down into these different themes. Um, considering the area itself is so broad, it's helpful to look at it from these theme perspectives. Um, I also noticed that each, uh, each of these themes don't stand always on its own, that there are some interconnectedness between these themes. Um, like for example, you'd need to understand why your model is behaving the way it is behaving um, or why it's giving the prediction that it is giving to probably address some fairness concerns. Uh, love to hear your take on the interconnectedness of these uh, themes and how participants can leverage. Yeah, absolutely. So these areas are interconnected. And as you mentioned, one area can help help to solve problems in another area. For example, um, interpretability and explainability algorithms can help us to better understand uh, the fairness uh, and the bias issues. Um, and also robustness um, is related to interpretability as well. Um, for example, uh, the quality of our robustness um, of our explanations depend, uh, depends how robust our models are. Yeah, so that's good to learn that your view of responsible AI matches how we think about it here as well. And so maybe the next question I have is what are some good examples of responsible AI projects that you're seeing out there right now? 
Yeah, so there are many responsible AI projects out there, um, many open source projects. Uh, for example, there for model explainability, there is Interpret ML, there is uh, Captum. For robustness, there are various different um, open source libraries that help us to conduct um, adversarial attacks and also defense. Um, there is, uh, for example, Opacus project that helps us to perform privacy preserving ML uh, for our PyTorch models. There is um, Fairness Flow and uh, Fair uh, Learn for the uh, Fairness projects. And I think some of those exist currently in our PyTorch ecosystem as well, um, like Captum and Opacus and fair learn um, exists in the PyTorch ecosystem. And so for participants, this is a great way to start with something that already exists and build on top of that um, rather than starting from scratch. Now coming to the next question, what are the qualities of a good responsible AI project according to you? Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question. So, um, so some good qualities of responsible AI uh, project include um, in innovation. So we want something innovative uh, that is not too complex, but um, helps us to solve specific outstanding problem in the area of responsible AI. It could be any sub area such as explainability, fairness, privacy, robustness, or safety. Um, so good qualities also include a clear defined problem statement, um, simple and elegant solutions. Uh, the solution doesn't have to be complex or convoluted or implement a very complex mathematical equation. It could be something relatively simple. Um, from code quality perspectives, um, it's good to have something that is easy to use. It's well documented, tested, um, and provide some examples, tutorials, also future directions, how this specific project can be used um, in any AI application um, to solve uh, responsible AI problems. That's great to know for our participants on how to approach something as broad as responsible AI. What, in your opinion, would be a good recommendation for hackathon participants to approach responsible AI, especially considering we have many student participants this year? Yeah, so, um, so as I mentioned, it's very important to have clearly defined problem in mind. I would recommend to choose a specific area of a responsible AI because responsible AI is so, is so broad. We uh, would need to start with something um, specific that we have in mind for a specific model and data sets that we are, they are the participants are passionate about. Um, also in advanced literature review, um, and exploring existing PyTorch model can help the participants to understand the gaps um, in um, existing tools and outstanding problems. Um, and also I would encourage the participants to use existing libraries such as Captum, Opacus, um, and do not reinvent something that already exists, but uh, build on top of those, those, those tools. Are some great tips. Those are some great tips, thank you. Uh, we may also have participants who want to try a project in this category, but they don't know where to start. And so what are some major problems or problem areas or challenges that you're seeing right now in the world that they could tackle in as part of this hackathon? Yeah, so responsible AI has many uh, problems um, that could be tackled. Um, we see many papers in conferences, many op open source projects, but still uh, there are many open um, outstanding problems that the participants can solve. And I will mention a couple of them um, in specific areas of responsible AI, and that could be interesting. Um, but I would encourage the participants also to come up with their uh, own ideas um, and um, follow their the direction that they are more passionate about. So in terms of explainability and interpretability, it would be great to see self-explainable um, model architectures. Um, use state-of-the-art approaches for explaining black box models and think of how those explanations could be used in a creative way to better understand our models and our model decision boundaries. Um, also thinking of uh, 
tools and techniques that could help us to better debug um, and understand model predictions, um, specifically the misclassified examples. Um, it would be also interesting to look into robustness and different robustness metrics and see how these different robustness metrics could uh, work in combination um, with different adversarial attacks. Um, in terms of fairness, uh, participants could uh, pick a problem uh, where there is in the data set we have uh, protected attributes present such as skin color, gender, race, and um, try to come up with a detection and mitigation techniques for those data sets and models that could be, for example, toxicity model. Um, and um, in terms of privacy preserving ML, the participants can think of uh, coming up with end to end uh, privacy preserving training and inference pipelines um, that leverage existing libraries such as Opacus and propose innovative solutions on top of it. Those are some great uh, problem areas for our participants to tackle. And also looking back at all the things that we have discussed, being specific, uh, being creative and being simple in the solution. Uh, would be a guiding factor um, in how they could approach the responsible AI projects. Thank you so much for uh, being with us today and sharing all your knowledge with us um, and participating in this conversation. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me, Jodi, and I wish good luck to participants. Thank you. Thank you, Narine. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining today. I'm really looking forward to seeing your projects in this category. Good luck on the hackathon.